This is a presentation originally produced for a conference we were unable to attend due to COVID. Whereas it focuses on the outcome of investigations undertaken in the Zagros Forland Basin, we have slightly expanded the presentation to make it a more generalized review of the critical factors involved in platform scale replacement dolomite formation. This presentation does not attempt to address more localized dolomite forming processes such as hydrothermal dolomite, methanogenic dolomite, etc. Much of the research presented here was undertaken between 2015 and 2020 at ExxonMobil Research Qatar and Doha. Virtually all the data in this presentation has been recently published in peer-reviewed journals, particularly the Journal of Sedimentary Research and the Journal of Sedimentology. Most of the references within this presentation are also listed in these reports. As a bit of background, I have approached issues regarding dolomite through the study of modern natural systems, whereas my colleague, Dr. Kazmarek, has more focused on laboratory-based dolomite synthesis studies. We both have studied many ancient dolomite forming systems of the rock record. The quote, dolomite problem, end quote, was introduced by Van Toole back in 1916. It comprises two parts. First, there are massive amounts of ancient limestones, calcium carbonate deposits, that have been replaced by the mineral dolomite, which is magnesium bearing. However, recent, Read into that Holocene and Pleistocene deposits contain minuscule amounts of dolomite, although its occurrence is widespread, including in intertidal settings, in open marine settings that are reef forming, and in deep water settings. The second part of the problem is that whereas low temperature synthesis of significant quantities of calcite and aragonite is of no issue, synthesis of dolomite has been difficult, and only small quantities have been produced including in the presence of sulfate-reducing microbes. The reason for the dichotomic nature of dolomite presence in geologic history has been a matter of debate for the past 100 years. It has long been assumed that dolomite formed more readily in ancient systems relative to today. Factors proposed to be critical for this enhanced dolomite formation of the past are numerous and varied. Although this list is not exhaustive, some of the more commonly cited factors include burial, the idea that dolomite more readily formed at higher temperatures associated with the geothermal gradient. The greater extent of particular depositional environments has been proposed, such as restricted lagoons. Enhanced sulfate reducing microbial activity associated with lower levels of atmospheric oxygen. Elevated sea level resulting in the flooding of continents and long residence times in the marine diagenetic realm long periods of geologic time that might be required to accommodate the slow growth of dolomite apparent from laboratory synthesis studies, as well as factors in past ocean chemistry relative to the modern ocean, factors of seawater chemistry proposed to promote dolomite formation based on natural systems and laboratory synthesis studies include elevated alkalinity, elevated magnesium to calcium ratios, low sulfate levels, elevated salinity, lower carbonate saturation states, and elevated temperature. Note the presence of seawater, which is the only reservoir capable of producing the quantity of magnesium required given the amount of ancient dolomite observed, is not included as a critical factor because its presence is assumed in both dolomitizing and non-dolomitizing systems. No single experiment or set of observations of a modern or ancient dolomite forming system can account for so many variables, i.e. an integrated study of dolomite formation across geologic time from various systems is required to account for all the possibilities listed here. As mentioned previously, much of the work reported in this presentation was undertaken in Qatar, a peninsula protruding into the Arabian Gulf, the modern Forland Basin of the Zagros Mountains. Barren Eocene rocks cover most of Qatar, with outcrops of Miocene deposits restricted to the southwestern portion of the country. Pleistocene outcrops are rare, but present in some coastal areas. Mid-Holocene deposits ring the coastal line of Qatar, reflecting deposition between 6,000 and 1,500 years ago, when sea level in this region was approximately 1.5 meters higher than today. The image on the upper right shows siliciclastic dunes in the southeastern portion of the country migrating southward, under the influence of the Shamal winds. They are migrating over the table flat plain defined by the Stokes surface. 
the top of the capillary fringe above the water table. Because of a lack of land plants in this arid setting, any dry sediments above the stoke surface are denuded by the wind, which is why Qatar is mantled by barren rock away from coastal areas. The arid setting of Qatar also leads to coastal seawater concentration by evaporation to gypsum saturation in some subtidal settings and halite saturation in some intertidal ones. The association between arid depositional environments and dolomite formation has long been appreciated, leading Friedman to term dolomite an evaporite mineral. This association was proposed by Adamson Rhodes, among others, to result from the chemical evolution of seawater during evaporation to one with high magnesium to calcium ratios. These brines were thought to be hot, temperatures of greater than 35 degrees or above, highly alkaline, and with a pH of 9 or higher. However, in 1983, Lazar showed seawater concentration to gypsum saturation actually causes the pH drop, leading Sun in 1992 to speculate this leads to replace of dolomitization as the system becomes undersaturated with respect to metastable carbonates. Much recent work has gone into understanding the links between sulfate-reducing microbes and dolomite formation in this setting. The focus of much of the work undertaken in Qatar over the past several years was to understand the association between dolomite and arid systems, and to apply that understanding to the broader question as to why dolomite is more common in the rock record relative to today. To understand the history of dolomite formation in Qatar, we undertook numerous investigations between 2015 and 2020. These included a multi-season survey of coastal water chemistry, in particular to look for magnesium sinks that might indicate ongoing dolomite formation, sediment-packed burial experiments to indicate modern diagenetic environments in which replacive dolomite formation might initiate, and characterization of dolomite in Holocene and Pleistocene de deposits, as well as Miocene and Eocene rocks. Characterization of these ancient deposits was through core base studies that, in large part, were undertaken at Western Michigan University with the notable aid of Dr. Brooks Ryan. The survey of coastal water chemistry encompassed samples taken from open gulf settings, restricted subtidal lagoons, as well as intertidal ponds. The waters varied in salinity across this spectrum of environments from near normal marine values of 40 parts per thousand to halite saturated waters of 340 parts per thousand. Calculated saturation states for all samples showed these waters to be many times supersaturated with respect to calcite and aragonite across all degrees of evaporation. With respect to dolomite, saturation states ranged from just below 1,000 times supersaturated in open gulf waters to significantly greater than 10,000 times saturated in waters above gypsum saturation. Magnesium and magnesium calcium ratios indicate magnesium mostly acts conservatively across all degrees of evaporation, with one magnesium to calcium ratio reaching as high as 80. One notable exception to the conservative behavior of magnesium was in a coastal salt flat, where meteoric water had ponded following a rare but significant rainstorm. Here magnesium levels and magnesium to calcium ratios were depressed. Inspection of the aragonitic mud lining the floor of the pond revealed it contained approximately 10% poorly ordered dolomite. Therefore, ongoing dolomitization with an underlying sediment, even to this small degree, is expected to be reflected in the chemistry of the overlying pond and lagoonal water. In the restricted marine settings of Qatar, however, where salinities are extreme and microbial mats grow prolifically, the aqueous evidence for significant dolomite formation is absent. It has long been reported that protected coastal Sapka systems of Qatar are sites of dolomite formation, starting with Illing in 1965. Significant quantities of dolomite, in some cases greater than 50% of carbonate sediments, have only been reported in muddy sediments of highly evaporative upper intertidal zones in the Sapka Fishak, and appear to be associated with dissolution of scalable carbonate grains, replacement of aragonitic mud, and precipitation of gypsum. More recently, SEM-based observations show minor amounts of dolomite are also found in the microbial mats of the lower intertidal zone there, and can form in other tidal flats 
as a primary precipitate. To evaluate the efficiency of replacement dolomitization in these environments, a sediment reactivity experiment was undertaken with packs of metastable carbonate sediment collected from modern depositional settings along the open coast, being buried in various restricted coastal settings, including within mud below a subtidal lagoon, within microbial mats of an intertidal lagoon, and within microbial mats of a tidal pond, where salinities reach as high as 350 parts per thousand. Samples from all locations showed no evidence, based on bulk XRD measurements, of dolomite formation. It is notable that in spite of extremely high dolomite saturation values and the proven presence of microbes capable of producing small amounts of dolomite in this setting, based on SEM studies, these sediment pack experiments seem to support the water chemistry data with the takeaway that there is no evidence for widespread or rapid replace of dolomite formation in the modern coastal marine system. Starting with investigations detailed in the famous Purser volume of Arabian Gulf reports in 1973, multiple studies of Holocene deposits along the open eastern and northern coastlines of Qatar have been undertaken. In all cases, evidence of ongoing dolomite formation was scant or completely absent. All examples of dolomite described in these deposits were interpreted to have eroded from underlying Eocene strata. One recent study useful to consider is that of the barrier islands forming along the northern coastline of Qatar. XRD and petrographic studies of sediments recovered by vibracoring the modern barrier and back barrier deposits, or microbial mats form in intertidal settings, show dolomite to be present only in the form of eroded Eocene clasts. Investigation of equivalent mid-Holocene barrier island and back barrier lagoonal deposits resting directly shoreward of the modern system likewise demonstrate that only Eocene aged detrital dolomite is present. Notably, lithified microbial mat deposits located behind the mid-Holocene barrier, virtually identical to modern equivalents found offshore, are cemented by macritic high magnesium calcite cements, not dolomite. Importantly, most mid to late Holocene deposits remain sediments, with significant lithification only observed in the form of beach rock along the modern barrier beach and the equivalent mid Holocene barrier beach located on shore. The observation that lithification is mostly absent in Holocene deposits, with the exception of beach environments, has been made by other investigators of similar deposits along the east coast of Qatar. It must be envisioned that without such early cementation, only strandline deposits affected by beach rock formation would remain undenuded following a sea level fall and the accompanying lowering of the Stokes surface. Outcrops of both marine and aeolian Pleistocene rocks can be found scattered along the coastal regions of Qatar. Many of the marine deposits form outcrop stringers kilometers in length and only meters in height and tens of meters in width. These deposits commonly display cross-bedded grainstones showing landward directed migration, capping packstones that sit directly on top of Eocene bedrock. Such deposits are here interpreted to represent barrier beach or spit deposits identical to the barrier island type deposits forming in the modern system on Qatar's northern coast. In such systems, barriers migrate landward during transgression by washover, capping lagoonal deposits that formed in back barrier settings. Unpublished bulk isotope measurements of the underlying pack stones show them to have high delta 18O values, consistent with formation in evaporated waters that can evolve in back barrier settings. Petrographic and XRD based inspection of the rocks forming these outcrops show that dolomite is only a minor constituent and occurs in the form of detrital grains eroded from the underlying Eocene deposits. The critic calcite cements, petrographically identical to beach rock type cements in the modern system, are observed bridging grains in the cross bedded layers. Notably, these beach deposits are surrounded by the Eocene substrate on which they formed, and the landward lagoonal deposits and seaward open ramp deposits that must have been associated with them are absent. The absence of these contextual deposits is interpreted to be the result of wind denudation above the Stokes surface, which likely 
itself reflects a lack of early cementation, as is observed at Holocene Lagoonal and coastal ramp deposits, landward and seaward, of modern beaches. This map displays the extent of Pleistocene deposits, shown in red, along a representative stretch of the eastern Qatar coastline. The scope of the Pleistocene denudation can be appreciated when comparing this with the extent of equivalent deposits from more humid settings, such as San Salvador Island in the Bahamas and the UQ Islands of Japan. Similar observations can be made in other humid coastal carbonate settings, such as the island of Bermuda and the Yucatan Peninsula, where deposits of carbonate rocks from multiple Pleistocene marine isotope stages have been near the surface kilometers inland from the coast. Note, these maps are to the same scale and show similar coastal elevations. The relative absence of coastal Pleistocene deposits is not limited to Qatar, but extends across the southern Arabian Gulf. It has also been noted in other arid settings, including southernmost Tunisia and the inner shelf of the arid Great Australian Bight of Southwest Australia. Doubtless, there are exceptions and uncertainties with regard to paleoclimate, but it may be a general hallmark of highly arid settings where meteoric cementation and rooting is arrested, that near-shore high-stand carbonate deposits are not retained, but largely denuded by aeolian or possibly ravine processes as a result of sea level change. Characterization of the Eocene and Miocene rocks of Qatar has been undertaken by various researchers. Much recent effort has focused on the parogenesis of the Eocene deposits by Dr. Brooks Ryan at Western Michigan University. The Miocene deposits were characterized in the early 2000s by a group led by Dr. Harold Dill, working out of Hanover University. Both of these deposits in Qatar are extensively dolomitized, and available reports indicate that the dolomite replacement affected much of the Zagros Foreland Basin. Even conservative estimates point to tens of thousands of cubic kilometers of dolomitized rock. In the area of Qatar, these rocks are never thought to have been buried to any significant extent, with the Oligocene being understood as a time of non-deposition, and the Miocene rocks having suffered only localized recent uplift. Important published observations include the following. High stand lagoon deposits are common. Frequently, such deposits are overlain and underlain by obvious exposure surfaces. Initial dolomite replacement appears to have occurred prior to exposure and is deemed sin sedimentary. The image to the right shows the rims of dolomite ROMs being dissolved and replaced by meteoric calcite cement with highly negative delta 18 O values. Dolomite replacement proceeded across both bedded gypsum bearing and gypsum free basins. Finally, dolomite replacement was noted across all depositional facies from middle ramp to inner tidal, and rocks commonly bear clear evidence of oxidizing seafloor conditions, including intense bioturbation by highly diverse trace fossil assemblages. Retention of high stand deposits in the ancient rock record of Qatar indicates early lithification occurred that did not or has not occurred in more recent deposits. Lithification and retention might be promoted by the formation of bedded evaporites, although these occur only locally in the Eocene and Miocene rocks of Qatar. More broadly, lithification may have resulted from the sin sedimentary dolomization interpreted in the parogenesis studies. Examples of lithification by dolomite replacement include Illing's observations of dolomite replacement in the Qatar Sapka environment, a report by Dravis and Wanless on dolomites forming on Caicos Island, image shown to the right. Deffy's report on Bonaire dolomite and Carbello on land's description of dolomite replacement in the Sugarloaf Key of Florida. Synthetic dolomites formed by replacement of calcite powder at elevated temperatures likewise show the process to be a lithifying one. In all these cases, a significant degree of dolomite replacement, generally greater than 50%, was reported. Examples of modern sediment containing significantly lower quantities of orthogenic dolomite, such as the muds with 10% dolomite in the brackish tidal pond described earlier, remain unlithified. In sum, rock record retention through lithification by dolomite requires significant dolomite replacement on a cycle-by-cycle -cycle basis. 
This agrees with laboratory growth experiments indicating short dull light in induction times. It also indicates, at least for the Miocene rocks, significant dull light replacement occurs in less than 40,000 years, as these rocks were affected by obliquity cycles of this duration. Manchi and Kazmarek also concluded that cycle by cycle dolomite replacement of limestone best explains the cyclic variability in dolomite stoichiometry they observed in Cretaceous platform dolomites of Texas, image shown to the bottom right. This same cyclicity is observed in the dolomites of the Miocene rocks of Qatar based on unpublished data. Finally, it must be concluded that the association between arid systems and dolomite is in large part preservation bias. We observe in the modern system and in the Pleistocene evaporative marine coastal systems can be limestone factories, but these deposits, particularly the high stands, are not largely retained to the rock record. Let us now return to the critical factors discussed at the beginning of this presentation to address which best explain the temporal and spatial distribution of dolomite occurrences observed in Qatar. The understanding that the Eocene rocks of Qatar have never been buried to any significant degree and that the Miocene rocks have only suffered uplift since their deposition precludes burial in associated elevated temperatures as a critical factor for their dolomization. Additionally, many ancient platform dolomites, for example those with the Cretaceous Edwards Formation in Texas, have never been greatly buried, whereas many ancient limestones situated between dolomitized strata have been. Such observations generally support the petrographic interpretation that many platform dolomites are syn sedimentary. That is, the calcium carbonate is replaced by dolomite within the depositional environment. Such interpretations have been made by generations of petrographers based on cross cutting relationships and the preservation within early dolomites of delicate depositional structures, such as finestral pores, which are unlikely to survive even minimal burial. Buried syn sedimentary dolomites showing isotopic evidence of higher temperature formation likely have recrystallized in that environment, as has long been understood to create the burial diagenic trend of lowering delta 18O values and constant delta 13C values. Indeed, evidence from Qatar unequivocally shows early recrystallization and isotopic reset can occur to these metastable early dolomites very soon after they form. The Cenozoic sediments and rocks from Qatar demonstrate no association between depositional environments and the presence or absence of dolomite, with modern and recent environments, including restricted lagoons, showing no evidence of rapid replace of dolomite formation, and ancient deposits displaying early dolomite replacement across the depositional spectrum from shallow restricted to open marine. Similarly, in spite of the widespread presence of decimeter-thick microbial colonies in the qatar sapka system documented to include sulfate-reducing microbes capable of forming dolomite, and which are bathed in water saturated greater than 10,000 times with respect to dolomite, the vast majority of associated deposits remain calcium carbonate. Furthermore, if intense activity of such microbes is required for dolomite formation, it would be reasonable to expect an association between more restricted environments where microbial deposits dominate and the appearance of dolomite, which, as previously noted, is not observed. Massive amounts of dolomitized rocks and guitar show evidence of oxidizing seafloor conditions with high diversity skeletal assemblages and trace fossil types. Finally, it has been postulated that times of increased dolomite formation in the geologic past correlate to times of lower atmospheric oxygen levels and anoxia, creating a more active anaerobic microbial community capable of catalyzing dolomite formation. During the Cenozoic, however, oxygen levels are understood to have been as high or perhaps higher than today, failing to explain the dolomite distribution observed across time in the area of Qatar. Whereas microbes may mediate to one degree or another all near surface carbonate precipitation reactions, and so no doubt are an important part of the story. Their understanding has not yet resulted in a predictive tool for dolomite presence. In 1991, 
Duncan Sibley suggested flooded continents leading to long marine residence times promoted dolomite formation, a reasonable postulation given the association between the presence of dolomite and greenhouse systems of the past. Recent global mean sea level estimates have been documented by Miller et al. The red boxes show depositional intervals for the Eocene and Miocene dolomitized rocks of Qatar. The Eocene rocks formed during the early Eocene climatic optimum and the Miocene deposits during the mid-Miocene climatic optimum. Whereas the Eocene does represent a greenhouse period with sea level significantly higher than today, the Berdigallian rocks represent a time when mean sea level was only marginally higher than today, an ice house period, during which continents were emergent, indicating flooded continents are not a prerequisite for platform scale dolomite replacement. Relatedly, the importance of geologically long periods of time to allow for dolomite nucleation and growth for platform scale dolomite replacement is not supported by Qatar studies that show significant dolomite formation is required on the order of thousands of years to prevent denudation. Alkalinity has been shown to be relatively high in modern restricted coastal settings of Qatar where dolomite formation is largely absent. Alternatively, alkalinity across the Cenozoic is understood to have been generally lower than today, including during the formation of the Eocene and Miocene deposits of Qatar. Both of these observations argue against the importance of elevated marine alkalinity levels in the production of replaced dolomite. Secular variation in marine magnesium to calcium ratios show that these were lower than today throughout the Cenozoic, whereas elevated magnesium to calcium ratios do promote faster dolomite formation in high temperature dolomite synthesis experiments. The absence of high average marine ratios did not prevent rapid dolomite formation in the past, and the presence of locally high ratios does not lead to rapid dolomite formation in the present system. Marine sulfate levels during the Cenozoic have remained fairly constant. The inner bedding of some Qatar dolomites with gypsum deposits would seem to indicate high sulfate levels do not inhibit dolomite formation. In the modern system, waters evaporated to halite saturation do not cause replacement dolomite formation. Many ancient dolomites in Qatar replaced open marine deposits and were presumably dolomitized far from the source of evaporated waters. Whereas the possibility that these open marine deposits interacted with migrating concentrated waters earlier in their history cannot be discounted, neither can it be assumed. On balance, depressed sulfate levels and elevated salinities do not seem to explain many Qatar-based observations regarding dolomite formation. Both Cenozoic platform dolomite deposits formed during climactic optimums, times of elevated sea surface temperature and ocean acidification relative to today. The early Eocene climatic optimum is believed to have been caused by volcanic CO2 and seabed methane release. The mid-Miocene optimum has been associated with volcanic CO2 produced during the formation of the Columbia River basalts leading to the lowest aragonite saturation state of the past 22 million years, according to Sostian et al. in 2018. Therefore, if nothing else, the occurrence of mass dolomization events in the Zagros Basin during the Cenozoic does appear to coincide with both lower marine saturation states and elevated sea surface temperature. It is important to consider in some detail why depressed carbonate saturation states would lead to replacement dolomite formation. Typically, chemical notation for replacement dolomitization is shown by this equation. As written, this statement can imply solid state diffusion, which modeling shows to be far too slow to explain dolomite formation at low temperature. It is roundly understood that the more accurate generalized representation of replacement dolomite formation should be a two-step process. A, calcium carbonate dissolution, and B, dolomite formation. A great deal of work has gone into understanding step B, whereas step A is commonly neglected in the explanation for replacement dolomite. Of course, without step A, the reaction cannot proceed, so it is as vital as the formation of dolomite itself in the understanding of the processes creating the rock record. Three possibilities can lead to reaction A. First, it is conceivable that dolomite formation, perhaps initially as a cement, proceeds so rapidly that it causes undersaturation with respect to 
metastable calcium carbonate phases. Whereas this possibility cannot be totally discounted, there is a good deal of evidence that it is not common, at least in near normal or evaporatively concentrated seawaters. It has long been appreciated that aragonite and calcite are kinetically favored over dolomite, being able to take advantage of carbonate nucleation opportunities much more rapidly. Observationally, this is borne out in modern systems, with aragonite and calcite being the primary carbonate precipitates of the ocean. Based on petrographic studies, this seems to have also been the case for primary precipitates of the ancient oceans across the Phanerozoic. Both these observations align with low temperature laboratory synthesis experiments that demonstrate calcium carbonate phases are kinetically favored with remarkable consistency. The second possibility is dissolution of metastable carbonates associated with pressure at the point of dolomite crystal growth. Whereas some component of replacement may be related to this, Petrographic observations indicate dolomite of the rock record commonly precipitates in association with the formation of molds through the dissolution of allochems, which cannot be caused by pressure solution, and indicate that the interstitial fluids themselves are undersaturated. The third possibility, externally forced undersaturation, is exceedingly common in shallow marine diagenesis, being as ubiquitous as organic matter the oxidation of which leads to it. Even in warm water settings, as much as 50% of annual carbonate production can dissolve in association with CO2 release, sulfate redox, and H2S oxidation associated with the breakdown of organic matter. See Sanders 2003 for an excellent review. Most calcium carbonate lost in association with this early dissolution are of the least stable forms, particularly aragonite. In the cool water carbonate realm, where surface waters are less saturated with respect to aragonite due to higher CO2 content, oxidation of organic matter in the underlying pore waters leads to nearly complete dissolution of aragonite in approximately 20,000 years, and the associated generation of calcite cements with lower magnesium levels than their tropical counterparts. If overlying seawaters were more acidified, it is easily envisioned that pore water saturation states might fall below even calcite saturation, causing dissolution with respect to all common calcium carbonate phases and permitting dolomite to take advantage of carbonate nucleation events. That stated, step B in the reaction to the replacement of calcium carbonate by dolomite cannot be ignored, and the observation that deep, undersaturated seawater does not lead to significant dolomite replacement although small amounts of deep water dolomite are observed, points perhaps to the importance of higher temperatures genetically associated with global acidification events. It is important to point out that the link between lower marine carbonate saturation states and dolomite formation is not new. In 1960, Raymond Murray in his review of carbonate porosity formation wrote, Petrographic evidence indicates that dolomite formation is accompanied by or followed by dissolution of non-replaced calcite. Investigators of modern evaporative dolomite forming systems observed a similar link, states Steffi's. The fact that leached pellets and shells are found only in dolomite crusts of Bonaire suggests that dissolution is part of the dolomitization process. The molds visible in Holocene reflux dolomite of Caicos Island, shown to the right, and appreciation is extended to Jeffrey Dravis and Harold Monless for this image, tells a comparable tale and these molds are virtually identical to those observed in the dolomites of Qatar. From a global perspective, the association between low marine saturation states and dolomite formation was introduced by Kevin Gibbon and Bruce Wilkinson over 30 years ago based on tabulations of dolomite abundance through the Phanerozoic, and has since found support among others including Fred McKenzie who wrote that greenhouse systems were times of elevated atmospheric CO2, warm climate, and depressed seawater magnesium calcium ratios, pH, and carbonate saturation states with calcite and dolomite dominant. Finally, low temperature abiotic dolomite formation has been accomplished in the laboratory setting in association with calcite dissolution by pulsed CO2 flood. These laboratory accomplishments, however, seem to have gained little fanfare. I will conclude this presentation by returning to a modern dolomite forming system that I find to be informative when it comes to understanding controls on dolomite formation. 
These are ODP data from hole 1129 taken from the upper slope of the southern Australian margin. ODP data sets are excellent in that they include both poor water and mineralogical data, so that an integrated understanding of these systems is made possible. Here we have an example where depositional aragonite and high magnesium calcite are, quote, stabilized, end quote, to low magnesium calcite and dolomite. I will first point out that very similar systems are found off the Bahama Bank ODP hole 1005 and elsewhere, and that systems such as these may be volumetrically the most common way to mineralogically stabilize limestone. In this system, waters of elevated salinity formed during lower sea level stands are inferred to be reflexing down from the shelf. Note the increasing salinity with depth approximately 50 meters below the sea floor. These sulfate-rich waters interact with in situ organic matter of the slope deposits. Sulfate is reduced and H2S forms. The H2S then diffuses upward to the 50 meter boundary where it encounters normal marine pore waters and oxidizes, acidifying seawater at that boundary and sharply lowering the pH. This results in the dissolution of high magnesium calcite and aragonite and the precipitation of dolomite and eventually low magnesium calcite. Some things to point out. First, no dolomite formation appears to occur above this reaction zone in spite of exposure of these sediments to near normal marine pore waters for a period on the order of 130,000 years based on average accumulation rates. Second, if magnesium utilization is a measure, the 200 meter interval directly below this reaction zone is a very efficient dolomite forming system in spite of its occurrence at temperatures of less than 20 degrees Celsius. Third, Based on petrographic and isotopic analyses, there are two stages of dolomite formation, a nucleation stage that occurs in acidified seawater prior to metastable carbonate dissolution, and a growth stage that occurs during the dissolution. The nucleation stage indicates that dolomite will precipitate from near normal seawater once the possibility for nucleation of kinetically favored phases is removed. The isotopic evidence indicates the growth stage is not an equilibrium process, as dolomite crystal growth is isotopically indiscriminate. Lastly, approximately 200 meters below the sea floor, but still within the zone of sulfate reduction, the magnesium levels recover, indicating an arrest of dolomite formation. This is borne out using SEM petrography that shows diagenetic low magnesium calcite forming overgrowths on dolomite crystals. This occurs in spite of dolomite nucleation having been achieved, in spite of low sulfate levels, and the likely presence of sulfate reducing microbes and in spite of the production of H2S. Our contention is that it reflects the rising of carbonate saturation states away from the acidification zone above. The less stable phase is replacing the more stable one as the preferred diagenetic mineral. Low temperature carbonate diagenesis is not driven by equilibrium and stability. It is driven by disequilibrium, instability, and kinetics. The diagenetic work required for the wholesale replacement of tens of thousands of cubic kilometers of limestone by dolomite is, if nothing else, an indicator of an ocean in disequilibrium. To summarize this presentation, evidence of recent dolomite formation is mostly absent in the modern coastal systems of Qatar. Comparison of Pleistocene deposits with both modern equivalents in ancient systems and Pleistocene age equivalents in human systems indicates a lack of preservation as a result of poor lithification and the absence of roots, permitting denudation during low stand. Ancient deposits appear to have suffered since sedimentary dolomization, which causes lithification based on modern system observations, allowing their retention to the rock record. Therefore, the observed association between dolomite occurrence and arid depositional settings may, in large part, reflect a preservation bias. The modern evaporative system is a limestone factory, but it will likely not be preserved to the rock record. Finally, comparison of modern and ancient systems indicates that the acidification of warm seawater likely led to the massive dolomite formation observed in the rock record.